Hello everyone. Uh, for the past month I've been using Fedora Linux and today I will be showing you everything that was good, bad and ugly about it. I'm Gary Newell and I've been using Linux for over 20 years and I've been writing about it for over a decade for sites such as about.com and Lifewire. In the past year or so I've been developing this YouTube channel providing installation guides and reviews of over 30 Linux distributions. For the past three months I've experimented with spending a month on each distribution to give a longer period for the distribution to settle down rather than the normal one week hit and run reviews. Previously I've reviewed Ubuntu and MX Linux in this format, but this month it was the turn of Fedora. However, I didn't just pick the one of the meal Fedora that so many other reviewers have looked at. I chose to review the Budgie Atomic version. In this video you will find out what the Atomic versions are all about, what are the pros and cons of using such a system, how I used my system over the past month and any pitfalls I came across. I will also go into who this distribution is suitable for and the potential use cases for such a distribution. So let's begin with Fedora Atomic Budgie and what it is and how it differs from the normal Fedora that most people install. The people who developed Fedora have created a number of Atomic versions of Fedora, uh, each featuring a different desktop environment. For instance there's a GNOME version called Silverblue and a KDE version called Canoit. The Atomic distributions are all container based and they are heavily locked down to prevent a user from being able to break their systems. Normally if you have root access to your system you can amend all the files and folders and systems on your computer but with the atomic versions this just isn't possible. Now this may seem very restrictive and well it is. It is also a good thing for most non-technical users because it makes it very difficult to break anything. When updates occur the updates download and install into a separate container and only when the entire update process is complete will it be made available to you as a user. This means that your system can't break because of a bad update. If the update fails at any point, it rolls it back, but you don't see it because it's still running the same version you were running before. Only when the update completes will it be made available to you and therefore you start using it without any issues. Now installing Fedora Atomic Budgie is the same as it is for the standard Fedora installation. The Anaconda installer is not my favourite, but you can generally get set up and running within about 20 to 30 minutes. My main gripe with that installer is that it looks a little chaotic when compared to the Ubuntu installer, or the Calamari's installer used by so many other distributions. That aside, my experience with Fedora Atomic has been very positive. Hardware worked out of the box and I didn't need to install anything extra to make it work. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and printing all worked without losing any time at all. You don't get a whole lot of software installed by default. In fact, in reality, all you get is a web browser and the software manager, which enables you to decide the software you want to install. All software packages in the package manager are flat packs, and that means they are containerized. So, as with the distribution itself, if you install a software package and it doesn't work, it's not going to affect any other software packages on your system. My main gripe with the whole experience is the GNOME software manager. It is incredibly slow to load, and it's quite slow when searching for applications. That aside, all the applications that I required were available in the software manager, including Chrome, LibreOffice, Kdenlive for video editing, the GNU image manipulation program, or GIMP, for creating YouTube thumbnails, OBS for recording videos, Rhythmbox for audio, Celluloid for video, Shotwell for managing photos, a PDF viewer, and Grenview for image editing. For those of you who are coming from a Windows background and are worried about having to use the terminal, then you don't need to worry. I could have gone the entire month without using the terminal at all, and there was very little need to use it. When it comes to customization, it's fairly tricky and you're limited to what you can do. You can switch between dark and light mode, and it is also possible to install new themes, and you can place this little dot bar wherever you want on the screen. So what have I used Fedora for? In the main, I use my computer for the following tasks. Creating timesheets and invoices for my day job because YouTube video editing isn't my day job, luckily, because I would be broke very quickly. Uh, recording videos using OBS, uh, editing videos using Kdenlive, I create thumbnails using GIMP, and I write notes for my videos using LibreOffice Writer. Now all of these things work seamlessly in Fedora Atomic Budgie, and to be honest, I haven't had any gripes using it for the entire month. I don't feel like the lockdown nature of Fedora has really caused any issues at all. Well, almost. When I record videos using my phone, they often need to be compressed as the phone records them in 4K or in a much higher resolution than I need, and this leads to larger file sizes. 
I therefore need to compress the videos to a smaller size and I need to usually do it on mass not just one at a time. Now the program I normally use is called FFmpeg and it's slightly problematic installing FFmpeg as there isn't a flat pack for it. But I did come up with a solution using an app image and well all is well. And I have a video up here showing how to do that. So who is Fedora Atomic Silverblue and indeed all the other Fedora Atomic versions for? Windows users who are stuck on Windows 10 because their computers don't support Windows 11 will feel right at home. Once it is installed, Fedora is just going to work. If you use the GNOME Software Manager to find and install the applications you need, then you'll be more than satisfied. The Budgie desktop is easy to navigate and so Windows users will instantly be comfortable with the look and feel. And if all you do is a bit of web browsing, you watch YouTube videos, you monitor social media, you write some documents, check your email, do some spreadsheets and create the old presentation, then it will work perfectly. If you are into more creative pursuits, then whilst there isn't support for Adobe products per se, there are suitable tools for most people and there are also good online tools now that also serve these purposes. For gaming, Steam is available and with the Proton settings enabled, more and more top titles are available to play natively to Linux. And you can also use NVIDIA GeForce Now if you prefer cloud gaming. For software developers, there's a whole host of tools available. VS Code is available for JavaScript, C Sharp, and other programming languages. PyCharm, both the community and professional editions are available for Python programming. IntelliJ is available for Java, again, both the community and professional. And there are other Java IDEs, including Eclipse and NetBeans. Uh, for Git, uh, Git is available and Python is also installed by default. There are also good graphical Git tools such as Git Kraken and Git Kona. Uh, for API testing there's Insomnia and Postman and for databases there's MariaDB or MySQL. So for most software developers actually Linux is probably better than Windows. This version of Fedora, well it isn't really for those that like to tinker with their operating system. It's more for those that don't. For instance, if you want to switch out your desktop environment, you're not going to be able to do that. It's locked down. You are stuck with the Budgie version if you install Fedora Atomic Budgie. You're stuck with GNOME if you install Silverblue and KDE if you install Knoid. I have no trouble at all recommending this distribution for the everyday computer user. These type of distributions could easily become the norm going forward. Now, if you like this video and you want to try Fedora, then the installation guide will be linked at the end of this video, which is coming up in the next few seconds. And thank you for watching, and I will see you next time on Everyday Linux User.